feeling the pain of mine. Most of wines everywhere we are. Go figure what's the going. Far from the ground to know where you're going. Learn where you're from. That was Panagia by Franco-Cameroonian songwriter James BKS. After years in the background as a beatmaker, James BKS, who is the son of late Afro-jazz legend Manu Dibongo, is stepping into the light with a first album under his own name, Wolves of Africa. Part one was released in July. Part two will come out in November. To tell me more about it, I'm joined by the man himself, James BKS. Welcome Hello. to France 24. Thank you for having me. Such a treat to have you on the show. Now, uh, tell us what inspired this album that you've been working on for several years now, this double album, Wolves of Africa. Well, I really wanted to, you know, have something fresh, put something fresh to the table as far as the music. You know, I've been working for so long behind the scene, producing for a lot of artists, but I really wanted to tell my story and add something new and fresh to the table when it comes to like world music and Afrofusion. Because you started off as a musical producer and, and a beat maker. Uh, you were just talking about it there. You, you worked for some very prestigious artists in the United States, Pop Daddy, Snoop Dogg, here in France, the rapper uh, Booba. Uh, so what, in, what pushed you to come out of the shadow and into the light and, and, and write under your own name? I truly felt like I was doing kind of the same music as any other producers. And um, even though, you know, I was really humbled to be able to actually making a living out of music, I felt like I, I was missing something. I felt like I was going towards my 30s and I wanted to leave something behind me, you know. So I, I was I was a fan of like the Timberland, the Pharrell Williams, the Swiss Beats who were able to pave the way, obviously, but uh, were able to have like their own musical signature. And that was kind of the model that I was looking for. And uh, I always said to myself that whenever I would have the opportunity to actually produce music for myself, I would try to really aim at this kind of, you know, role models. And the, the result is, is incredible. Definitely I recommend uh, listening to your album, Wolves of Africa. Now, you perform under the name James BKS, BKS's Best Kept Secret. Yeah. But now the secret is kind of out of the bag, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, let's listen to another uh, track off your album. It's called Aquile. Take a listen. Anymore, can you take it anymore? I know I'm free now. I know I'm free now. So that was a quilly of James BKS's uh, solo album, Wolves of Africa, a uh, huge hit there, Quile, uh, which it actually fe features uh, the uh, late Cameroonian legend Manu Dibongo. You actually found out in, in your early adulthood that he was actually your biological father, and you ran into him uh, in a hotel, if I understand correctly. Can you, can you tell us more about that encounter? Yes, basically when my mom saw that I was taking the same path as him, not knowing who was my dad, she actually told me the secret. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was something that I really rejected at first because, you know, I was uh, uh, raised in love. You know, I had two wonderful stepfathers who really gave me that love that I needed. So I didn't need, I thought I didn't need that at first, but, you know, um, I moved back to France and um, I was just trying to put away the, the, um, the contract that I had, you know, at first with the major label that didn't go really go that well. And I was trying to go back from zero and really learn about the music industry and the music business. And that's when I ran into him. And um, when we first met, we exchanged a few words. And it took me like a few months to actually get to know him and tell him who I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we actually reunited for real, um, that bond really was unbelievable. And you went it on to uh, change your life and, and you went on to collaborate with him as well. Uh, yes, now we he, did. he sadly passed away uh, in 2020. Does he still continue to influence your, your creative process? Yes, most definitely. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I would have not 
reconnected with my my roots, you know, from Cameroon. He allowed me to to see different perspectives of um, how Cameroon is and what type of like goods that there is from there, you know. And uh, he introduced me to his musicians. I got to go on tour and concert with him, and um, he he really changed my perspective on my roots, you know. Because you were you were talking about your your roots. Uh, you were born in France to parents from from Cameroon. Moved to the U- U.S. as a young adult. Moved back to France. Uh, you have all sorts of influences, whether it's uh, hip hop from the United States, even uh, chanson française here in France, and of course music from across Africa. In the music that you write, are are you telling your own story in in your songs? Pretty much, yes. And that's why nobody would be able to do it if it wasn't me. You know, at one point I was behind the scene and. I was working with all these wonderful artists, but nobody would be able to actually carry the story of mine. So I decided to, you know, take the mic and, uh, yeah, pursue my my destiny. And you've collaborated with some incredible artists, so uh, Will I Am from Black Eyed Peas, and also the British actor Idris Elba. Uh, you released some uh, music on his album. He participates in a single off your album. How did that friendship come about? Um, he got to listen to Quelle, actually, which was my the very first record that uh, that we put out together, and we really became close. And um, it was like he is he's still like a big brother to me, you know. He allowed me to express myself in a bigger platform, and um, yeah, we we've been friends ever since, and we're still working together. And he was singing there on this clip that we're, we're looking at, a uh, new breed on uh, on your album. So we're just going to move very quickly to some other music news uh, that's making headlines and some exciting summer releases. The American living legend Beyonce is dropping her seventh studio album, Renaissance. It's her first solo project in six years. She says creating this album allowed her a place to dream and to find escape during a scary time for the world. I hope you find joy in this music and I hope it inspires you to release the wiggle, she says. Check out this carefree dance heavy summer anthem off the album. It's called Break My Soul. Take a listen. So Break My Soul there uh, by uh, Beyonce, a hotly anticipated album. James BKS, you have a summer suggestion for us as well. Tell us about it. Yes, I love the new record from Ed Sheeran and Fireboy, which is called Peru. Mm-hmm. Just got released, I think, a week or a few weeks ago. And that record is really, really good. So that's what you're going to be uh, dancing to uh, this summer? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Release the wiggle, as, as Beyonce <laughs> says there. Uh, next, the former uh, White Stripes frontman uh, Jack White is li- living up to his workaholic reputation. Just three months after releasing his fourth solo album, he's releasing his fifth, Entering Heaven Alive. It's been an eventful year for the blue-haired rocker. A few months ago, he proposed to his girlfriend Olivia Jean on stage, marrying her on the spot. Now, with 12 Grammys under his belt since forming the White Stripes in 1997, Jack White continues to crank out the hits. Check out this tune. It's called If I Die Tomorrow. If I die tomorrow, could you find it in your heart to sing? If my mother cries in sorrow, will you help her with the many things that she needs from time to time and pay to day? So back to you, uh, James BKS, your new album, Wolves of Africa, you've released on your own label, uh, and it's called Grown Kid. This gives you extra freedom, I imagine, but does it come with a lot of responsibility as well? Yes, of course. I mean, I've been working on that record for the past four years, so it's been a, a long road, but I'm really, really uh, proud of what we did, what we accomplished with my team, but also Polydor, mm-hmm. who've been uh, really helping us, you know, put the final, like, piece on the table and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that I'm finally 
able to express myself that way. It's amazing. And uh, your music videos are amazing as well. Definitely uh, recommend checking them out. Finally, some music uh, news from Muse. They're releasing a hotly anticipated ninth studio album at the end of the summer. It's called Will of the People. It goes from metal all the way to pop, according to the British rockers who produce the albums themselves. This is their best yet. Muse frontman Matt Bellamy says it was influenced by the increasing uncertainty and instability in the world. This album is a personal navigation through fears and a preparation for what comes next. We're going to leave you with a track off that album called Will of the People. But before we go, I want to thank my guest today, James BKS. Thank you so much for being with us on France 24. Thank you so much for having me. And definitely check out his album, Wolves of Africa. Part one is out now. Check out part two in November. For more arts and culture news, head to our website and stay in touch on social media. Stay tuned to France 24. More news is coming up right after this. We need a transformation.